Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a very unique locomotive. We're taking a look at the Pico Whitcomb 65 ton diesel locomotive. Now this was used both in switching and uh, other service. So, you know, mainline and switching service. So we're gonna take a look at this locomotive and see what you get. MSRP for the DCC ready version is $279.99 but you can get discounts from your brick and mortar hobby shops and online retailers. And the same goes for the sound version, which MSRP is for $379.99. So we're gonna get into this locomotive. This is Pico's first American locomotive from what I understand. So we're gonna unbox this, start from scratch and see what you get. So to remove the locomotive from the package, you have a sleeve here. And, you know, I just wanted to show the Pico design. You got like a steam side rod and a wheel as a graphic design. And when you get it out of the box, you still have another box and uh, shows the clear plastic blister, they call it, to hold the locomotive. In the back slides out this little case with your manuals. Speaking of manuals, just um, take a look here real quick. You've got the Pico locomotive right there on the front. 65 ton diesel. And this has Pico sound as well. Exploded parts diagram also here. So you can see, I don't even have to really open this up. You can see the inner workings of the locomotive. You've got a really smooth drive from what I understand. A powered drive that sits right here dual flywheel, and then the decoder sits above that. And then on the locomotive itself, the cab separates from the body if needed, and all those part numbers correspond to if you need assistance from Pico to order anything, and more on the inside as well. Now on the back, we have all our functions listed, and we'll go over a good number of these. Then you have a little Pico flyer as well, talking about, you know, different Pico items. So that's just some of the documentation included. And then the blister pops out from the front. And then you slide it out. Now, you're gonna see on the locomotive that it comes with uh, European style hook couplers, but that can be easily modified with snap-in uh, number 56043 knuckle couplers from Pico. There's knuckle couplers um, are a separate purchase. So when we look at this, I always show things essentially as delivered so we won't be swapping those out. Looks like uh, pulled a little bit of plastic from the bottom there. That's where the locomotive was slipping out, but here is the locomotive. Now this is a US Army locomotive and we'll get into the details next. Now this is a Whitcomb 65 ton diesel. It's also known as a 65-DE-19A. There were a lot of variants of the Whitcomb diesels and they all have these long strings of numbers and letters behind them, but that's this designation for this locomotive. This is U.S. Army, you know, late 40s. Uh, basically, these were made in Rochelle, Illinois, and after being built, they were sent all over the European theater. We're talking North Africa, Italy, France, Germany, etc. You know, primarily in World War II, but served after World War II as well. Now, the locomotives were built, as you can see, to be symmetrical. So it was easy for the crews to run these in either direction. And they were really good for wartime because, uh, in some cases I read, they were even disguised as boxcars to prevent bombing. Because enemy forces would seek out locomotives to destroy and they'd look for smoke uh, from steam locomotives uh, to, as a kind of area to hone in on to destroy the locomotives and stop progress of the Allies. So with these locomotives they had very low uh, smoke emission, virtually none, so it was really easy to disguise. Camouflage, like I said, they were camouflaged at box, as boxcars at one point, and they were uh, well known for pulling the first train across the rain, uh, first trains into Rome, into Paris, just all over the place. So a very good asset for the Army and Navy uh, primarily in the war. Matter of fact, it was such a good asset that they were actually awarded 
the Army Navy E Award for excellence in the manufacture of war related equipment, which was pretty neat. But as you can see, they're symmetrical here, <clears throat> and everything on the on the model is just greatly detailed. You've got a die cast, a chassis, and hood um, here. So this is all die cast, and you can just fill the cold metal, but still the detail is great. You got metal handrails. Uh, it's got great weight, and we'll get into that later because of the die cast setup. There are classification lights on the end here, and you've got the headlight, which I believe is LED. These are the little bumpers, and it's really not hard to change out that coupler either. It's just like remove the bum bumpers in a couple steps, and you can change the couplers out. A little compartment box here, and all of the latching details molded in for access to all these compartments, which would access the prime mover. The inside, the cab uh, detail, uh, is showing up as blank, a clear window there, but there are actual windshield wipers on each end, which are probably a little hard to see from this angle because they're so thin and nicely detailed. They're not those clunky old windshield wipers you sometimes get. And then there's a bell mounted over here as well. All right, zoomed in really nicely now, and you can probably see it, but may not read it. Um, it is legible under magnification. It's a U.S. Army plaque inset right here. You've got the forward indicator for the locomotive. This locomotive should typically run in this. This is the forward designator just showing which way the locomotive is built to run. Uh, but again, because of the symmetric uh, shape of this and, and design, you can run it either way. As we work our way back, you can see handrails, metal handrails above all the compartments. The engine compartments here, and up top you even see handrails to assist the crew and access to the roof. A very thin detailed horn right there in between the two classification lights. And there is a safety treaded walkway that's accurately modeled. Probably a little better to see from that angle there. You see U.S. Army Transportation Corps on the side, that's all accurate. And then you've got these trucks uh, from the pictures I can see, they're accurate as well. And you know, these things are still found in the United States today. As a matter of fact, there's one at the Trolley Museum of New York uh, that they just got running again in 2015, I believe. So there's actual some footage online of that. It's a yellow locomotive. I don't know if it was originally U.S. Army, but it's... Um, you know, something that's still seen in the U.S. and around the world today. So as we go to this end, a little more evident, you can see the grab irons and the handrails. <clears throat> Those are metal, as I mentioned. You do see the European-style coupler, which is totally a different coupler setup than we're used to. There's this metal latch that lifts up, and you couple the other one on and then drop the latch and it's a, a secure connection so but like I said they have the Pico coupler conversion kit number that I mentioned earlier that you can get now this angle is really good too because you can see the I think it's the MU stand receptacle there at the end you can see the bumpers very clearly these aren't spring loaded or anything I don't know if anybody's ever done that but um, they are fixed in place and accurately detailed very thin they're not clunky or oversized. They did a really good job. Uh, looks like precisely measuring the dimensions of this locomotive and taking it seriously and doing a great job on accurately rendering this locomotive. So on this end, more of the same. You know, there are horns on each end. Everything is mirrored uh, from that those handrails to the horns to the classification lights and again That's so they can easily operate All right, when you put it on a track You have two engines on this locomotive one on each side and you can start up both of them And what's really cool I noticed is if I hit F1 and then turn it off again, which starts engine number one It'll like failed attempt a failed start which I can show you real quick So that's pretty cool. Let me go ahead and hit F1 and keep it on and see what happens. And F2 would be the other engine. It's 
So you can hear that separately uh, starting up both those engines. F3 is the low or the high tone horn. F4 is low tone horn. F5 is both together, the high and low tone horns. F6 is the bell. Wow, that sounds amazing. F7's switching gear, which I believe is more of a setting, which we can go into those later. F8's cab light. I have to dim my lights for you guys to see some of the lighting functions, so we'll go ahead and do that now. Probably barely visible, but there is a cab light there. You also have the class lights that work, as you can see there, based on direction, I believe. Yep, there you go. These class lights. If you turn them off, the headlight goes back on. And there's your number board lights, which I didn't even see the number boards when showing you guys. But there are number boards there, and they are very accurately detailed. And by that, I mean you don't have a lot of light bleed. It looks really, really good. Just small lettering, but you can read it. Okay, when I hit function 10, you'll probably see that light come on. That's the driver's desk lighting. So F13's volume regulator, you can lower or you know adjust the volume. 14 is manual fan and 15 is compressor. We'll do those real quick. Your manual fan. And there goes your compressor. 16 and 17's radio chatter. And then you can change the language on F18. You can have an air, you have an air valve release on 19. On 20, there's sanding. Now for those that view that don't know, sanding is essentially where sand is coming out by the wheels to gain traction. 21 is engine room door. 22 cab window. F25 is clickety clack. And you hear curb squeal there as well. And then there's tunnel mode on F26. So I just wanted to go over all the functions being the first you know, HO Pico item I think I've ever reviewed. I wanted you guys to know what all was involved. Now, as you can already tell, at the slow speeds we've been operating, this is moving very slowly. But we're going to go ahead and test one speed step on this and see exactly what the scale mile an hour is at one speed step. All right, I uh, just went off, but it aired out because the locomotive was going so slow. So we're just going to go up to five speed steps. This is the first time my system's ever aired out from the slow speed. It looks like I might even have to go to eight speed steps because of the slow control of the locomotive here. In the history of reviews, this has to be the slowest speed control I've ever seen and the smoothest speed control at those slow speeds I've ever seen um, because it's just amazing. I'm at eight speed steps right now and this thing is still going, you know, very slowly in the tunnel and it errored again. So we're going to go to 10 or 15.
All right, we're trying to do slow speed tests, but this thing was so slow between zero all the way up to 10 and 12, that I've decided to go to 15 speed steps to see what it registers on the speedometer. And it's gotta be the slowest, most smooth drive I've ever seen in all of my reviews. Even at 15 speed steps, it's registering at 0.5 miles an hour. That tells you how incredibly precise and smooth it is. Now, that doesn't mean that it necessarily goes slow, because you can really crank this thing up and get it going. Now, another neat thing about this locomotive is if I start moving the locomotive, this is three speed steps. As you can see, it's crawling, but there's no real lurching, as we talked about how smooth and accurate the drive is. I, if Pico really opened up HO scale production in the US, they'd instantly be a leader because of what I'm seeing in this, in this review. But if I add just a little bit of load to the locomotive, the prime mover automatically responds and increases RPMs and, and adjusts to that strain. I'm not doing anything to the throttle. So it's another feature that we've seen before, but it's really accurately, greatly done in this locomotive. You hear that prime mover really kick up because it's got all the strain of the pull test not giving way. And there's 3.3 ounces of pull, which is approximately 50 HO scale freight cars. So really good pulling power out of this very small locomotive. I've seen full size ST70 ACEs from various manufacturers. Full size six axle diesels not have even that pull power um, that this little switcher has, if you want to call it a switcher. All right, the other question you may be wondering is what does this weigh? So we're gonna find out here. It is 12.3 ounces, 348 grams. So very, very good weight for such a small locomotive. And it's got to be due to that die cast assembly on the locomotive. Now the minimum radius on this is 14 inches. is 358 millimeters for the European folks. All right. Well, let's wrap up the final thoughts of this great locomotive. Uh, Pico really knocked this out of the park. They did a great job with accuracy of detail. They did a great job with sound. They did a great job with functionality, loading the locomotive with 26 functions, many of which I covered. The smooth drive, you know, just everything uh, about this locomotive. There's nothing really to dock it on. The NMRA compliance was fine. It, if I had hooked up American Couplers, we could have taken a look at that. But, you know, it's just a really great locomotive and I think it can be the sound can be summarized in the bell just sounds excellent so they did a really good job there you know and the smoothness of the drive can be summarized by moving it to five speed steps which is still like a quarter of a mile an hour on the speedometer here if that because we had it to 15 speed steps and it was registering at half a mile an hour and then the detail speaks for itself, the functionality of both the class lights, the headlights, and the different lighting functions, that desk light inside, the cab light inside. There is cab interior detail. It's just, I don't know, I'm not familiar with what the prototype had uh, to compare exactly if that's accurate, but it's, it's a great locomotive. I mean, like I said, if Pico started really opening up in America, everybody else should watch out because excellently executed model uh, precisely executed model no flaws to my knowledge i'm sure some of the people that really get in the details might find something but it's an amazing locomotive with amazing history in world war ii uh, the manufacturer in rochelle illinois of these and the asset they were to the war and i think it'd be good on your layout uh, and it definitely is a great model so with that said i will leave you with a little run by and sound and of this locomotive and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.